In this next part of the video, we'll talk about some of the more technical details of BT Corn, as well as some common questions and concerns that people often have about using and consuming this technology. The biggest and most important question that's on everyone's mind when it comes to BT Corn or any GMO product is, is BT Corn safe for me to eat? The short answer is yes. Let's take a look at what BT Corn does and how it works. BT Corn is a genetically modified organism that expresses an insecticidal protein that is poisonous to very specific pests of corn. These pests are most often in the caterpillar stages of various moth species, such as the European corn borer, the corn earworm, and the fall armyworm. All of these pests feed on the corn kernels and other tissues of the corn plant and have the potential to destroy entire crops of sweet corn. Since sweet corn is an industry that requires farmers to provide ears of excellent visual quality, a farmer's tolerance for insect damage to his or her crop is extremely low. When one of these pests take a bite of BT corn, the BT proteins go to work and kill the pest. This may sound alarming to consumers, after all, if the corn is poisonous to caterpillars, isn't it also poisonous to us? The short answer is no. To understand why, let's explore how BT proteins harm pests, but not other organisms. Let's use a corn earworm as an example. When a corn earworm eats the kernels off an ear of BT corn, the BT proteins enter the gut of the insect and bind to very specific receptors along the lining of their digestive tracts that are unique to these corn pests. These protein and receptor interactions cause their gut wall to weaken and eventually perforate, forming holes. Their digestive system ends up breaking open and it no longer works properly, so the pest stops eating, and this will eventually lead it to starve to death. This is a pretty grim fate for these insects, so what prevents you from meeting the same end if you were to eat BT corn? The answer is that you, and most other organisms, do not have these receptors in our digestive tract. The BT proteins simply have nothing to do when eaten by a non-pest organism. But what if we did have these receptors? Would that make BT corn harmful to us then? Still, the answer is no. Our stomachs use high levels of acidity to digest our food, but the guts of these pests use very strong bases to do the same. Our digestive systems are completely different chemical environments, and BT proteins simply cannot exist in our acidic stomachs. Any BT protein we ingest is deactivated and gone in mere seconds. So what is BT and where does it come from? BT is found in a soil microbe that exists almost everywhere in the world called Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis was found over 100 years ago in East Asia. The people who were farming silkworms for their cocoons noticed that many of their moths were getting sick and even dying after consuming leaves that were dirty and unwashed. This was before the use of widespread pesticides, so after a thorough investigation, it was found that these tiny microbes were the culprit. After this discovery, Bacillus thuringiensis was cultured for its insecticidal properties and marketed as a product most known as Dipel. Dipel was a dried powder containing the BT microbes and was very effective against the pests we discussed earlier. Insecticides using BT would eventually become officially listed as an organic pesticide for sale in the U.S. Unfortunately, the powdered BT was difficult to use and apply on a large scale. The BT microbes couldn't survive out in the sun for very long, and this pesticide required frequent reapplications, especially after rain. They are, after all, soil bacteria, not plant surface bacteria. The genome of BT was eventually sequenced, and scientists found a single gene that coded for the production of the protein that gave BT its insecticidal properties. Scientists hypothesized that if this gene could be spliced into a field crop like corn, they would see greater control of insect pests than any spray could ever hope to achieve. So scientists set out to insert the BT genes into the genome of corn. For splicing in a gene from a natural source, scientists had two main methods, the gene gun and agrobacteria tumefaciens. The gene gun is a device that bombards a cell with nano-sized bullets of gold or platinum. 
These bullets are coded with the genes that scientists want to insert into a cell's genome. It is up to random chance whether or not one of these bullets will hit the cell's nucleus in such a way that will incorporate the target gene into the cell's genome without killing the cell. The gene gun has lately fallen out of favor and has been replaced by methods such as the use of Agrobacteria tumefaciens. Tumefaciens are another type of soil bacteria that is found all over the world. This bacterium possesses a very interesting ability to carry a set of DNA to a target cell and deposit the DNA in the genome of the target cell. Tumefaciens were recognized to be able to fundamentally change a cell's expression of its genetic material since nearly 100 years ago. They were first found forming galls on trees, and scientists noticed that even if you were to sterilize the gall and get rid of the bacteria, the chemicals present around the tree cells forming the galls were still being produced. This told scientists that the tree cells had begun to express these chemicals themselves. The tumefacient accomplishes this feat of genetic engineering by using a mechanism called the TI plasmid. A plasmid is a piece of DNA that is circular rather than linear and is very common in many microbes. A plasmid can actually perform functions other than just genetic storage unlike linear DNA. The TI plasmid is a fairly well understood phenomenon that geneticists and bioengineers frequently use to insert genes into genomes with significantly greater reliability than gene guns. Once the genes are in the cell, the cell can be easily grown into a healthy, full-sized plant. This ability for plants to be able to go from a single cell all the way to a mature plant at almost any time is called totipotency. The first generation of Bt corn has now been successfully produced. Now, we are free to cross the first Bt corn into breeds of corn that have established commercial purposes such as field corn for animal feed or sweet corn for human consumption. So who regulates these products and what government agencies are involved? Keep in mind, this is an American production, so we will only be addressing regulations in the USA. There are three separate government agencies that regulate the commercial production and consumption of BT crops and GMOs in general. These three agencies are the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the United States Department of Agriculture, Animal, Plant, Health, and Inspection Services, USDA, APHIS. But what role does each agency fill when it comes to ensuring the safety of BT corn and other GMO products? Let's start with the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA. The EPA has declared Bt crops as plant-incorporated pesticides, which makes sense since the plants are able to produce the Bt protein systemically throughout the plant. Since the EPA's job is to regulate pesticides, Bt crops are regulated just like other conventional insecticides. The EPA continues to demand more comprehensive research into the potential environmental effects which include insect resistance monitoring and environmental monitoring plans. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, evaluates Bt crops and other GMO products for human toxicity and possible allergenic effects. This agency has total authority to restrict the marketing and sale of any GMO products if they pose a threat to human health. As of the production of this video, the FDA has never had to exercise its authority on Bt foods a single time and have been fully approved for human consumption. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, or USDA APHIS, regulates the import, interstate movement, and environmental exposure of GMO crops. With Bt sweet corn, APHIS requires an environmental assessment to uncover any possible environmental issues with the biotechnology. New studies are constantly being designed to ensure that we can measure the impact of GMOs accurately without the technology getting away from us. It is always good to express a healthy amount of skepticism when it comes to the production and regulation of GMO products. We as consumers need to constantly demand that these products be safe, nutritious, and sustainable. All of these government agencies work together to regulate GMOs to do just that so that we can continue to develop the tools that we will need to feed the future population of the planet. So what are some of the major benefits Bt sweet corn provides to farmers that conventional, non-Bt corn does not? 
There are many advantages to BT corn production, but the three major benefits we'll be talking about today include reduced insecticidal spray applications, reduced negative impact on beneficial insects, and increased crop yield. First, BT sweet corn significantly reduces the number of required sprays to curb insect pest damage. It is important to note that while it has not eliminated pesticide application entirely, over the past 20 years, GMO crops have reduced the need for pesticide applications by over 37%. In Maryland, it is required for non-BT corn crops to be sprayed 8 to 10 times every season with pesticides to have even a chance at a harvest. Further south, the amount of pesticide sprays can be as high as 15 applications of pesticides per year. Over this 20-year span, BT corn alone has resulted in 175 million pounds of insecticidal active ingredients not being applied to corn. That's the combined weight of 12 Eiffel Towers. The specificity of the BT proteins to caterpillar pests ensure only the target pests like corn earworm and European corn borers are killed by the corn systemic insecticide. Since farmers of BT corn don't have to frequently spray with broad-spectrum pesticides, beneficial insects such as bees, earthworms, butterflies, and ladybugs remain unharmed in BT fields. Finally, BT sweet corn has increased total corn yields for farmers. The control of caterpillar damage allows the farmers to harvest a greater number of marketable ears. Estimates show that GMO crops have enhanced crop yields by 22% in the past 20 years. When this increased revenue due to greater yield is coupled with the reduced need to purchase insecticidal sprays, farmers can experience an increase in profits by producing BT corn and other GMO crops. This financial security brought about by both crop protection and reduced input costs encourages farmers to remain in the industry and solidifies farming as a viable career choice for the next generation of new farmers.